what are you and FEMA doing to, to prioritize equity when it comes to disaster recovery? This is something that I think about every day. And this was one of my priorities when I first came uh, into the agency to serve in this role as FEMA administrator. What has happened to our country, my fellow Americans, Nez Nation? What happened to the values, principles, and ideals that spawned this beautiful republic that have been foundationed on the premise that the best person for the job wins. The best idea wins, regardless of your race, regardless of arbitrary characteristics that you have no control over, like your gender, the color and skin tone that you possess, ethnicity, your background, your religion, your sexual orientation, and the like. I mean, what happened? How did we allow this contagion, this parasitic idea, DEI, didn't earn it, infect every single facet of our society, every industry, every vertical, both public and private? I've talked about this so many times on my channel. I used to teach at some of the most prestigious universities in our nation, in the world. And I'm telling you right now, I guarantee you, if you're a professor or teacher or student, let me know in the comments. Please confirm for me. I'm not, I'm not just making this stuff up. I got emails. I got absolutely bombarded every single day. Conferences, events, trainings, emails, messages, you name it. All in the name of equity. All in the name of diversity. All in the name of inclusion. When it literally equates to discrimination. It literally is promulgated on the idea of not who is the most qualified, who is the most skilled, who is somebody who actually deserves the attention, but it's based on discrimination. Literally, it's based on discrimination. There is no inclusion. It is not based on equity one iota. I want to first say my thoughts and prayers are going out to Floridians and everybody in the Southeast. North Carolina, Georgia, Virginia, Tennessee, everybody who has already been impacted by Hurricane Helene. And now we've come to understand and learn that Hurricane Milton is now on its way to being a Category 5 hurricane. My heart goes out. Please, please, please get to safety. Please, please, please leave that location as soon as possible. They're saying landfall may not happen until Wednesday. I'm recording this as of this recording on Monday, October 7th. So please, if you're watching this on Monday, I beg you, please head for safety as soon as possible. This is the kind of stuff I found investigating FEMA and their DEI. And I'm gonna also play you another video coming up soon. They start with white supremacy and race. Let me bring this and blow this up a little bit. I want you to look at this. This is directly from one of their DEI trainings that I was able to get a hold of. Why start with white supremacy and race? White supremacy is an ideology, a pattern of values and beliefs that are ingrained in nearly every system and institution in the U.S. It is a belief that to be white is to be human and invested with inalienable universal rights, and that to be non-white means you are less than human, a disposable object for others to abuse and misuse. The white Christian male is the standard default setting in society. Race intersects all other dimensions of diversity. What an absolute crock of BS. You're injecting discrimination and racism where there isn't any. This is literally reverse racism. This is literally the garbage that gets thrust onto everybody. When I worked at the university, this is the kind of garbage that we got every single day. You are literally looked and viewed. If you are a white male over the age of 35, you are public enemy number one. And for what? just existing. They're using the least common denominator to equate to the whole.
That's like essentially, to give you an analogy, that's like looking at every single person who drives a vehicle as some maniacal, out of control anarchist who breaks all the laws and regulations and harms everybody every time they get in a car because there's a few momos who drive and drink under the influence and cause irreparable damage. You're using the least common denominator to essentially define the whole. It makes no sense. It's insanity. This is a letter from Diane Criswell, who is the FEMA administrator, who uh, went on MSNBC and CNN denying the fact that billions of dollars, millions of dollars has been uh, diverted uh, from FEMA funds. This is our taxpayer dollars, by the way to fund illegal aliens and migrants. She went on national television and said that was not true, even though Mayorkas confirmed it. There's been plenty of data, plenty of statistics and reports that have shown there have been millions, if not billions of dollars diverted to illegal migrant criminals. And this is a letter from her saying she is proud to share her 2022 26 FEMA strategic plan. The first thing she mentions in this overall mission statement and plan is the very first paragraph. First, we must instill equity as a foundation of emergency management. Systems that foster inequality serve no one, especially in times of crisis. We must recognize that disasters affect individuals and communities differently. Commit ourselves to reducing barriers to access and deliver equitable outcomes for all we serve. What kind of filth is this from our emergency, federal emergency agency? What does equity have to do when it comes to disasters, when it comes to emergencies? Why don't you just help all Americans who need help? Why do you have to base your assistance on whether or not they are from some certain background or color or race or ethnicity or sexual orientation? It makes absolutely no sense, my fellow Americans. And if you're like me and you've seen all the footage You've heard from actual North Carolinians. You've heard from Floridians. You've heard from people who all over Georgia, Tennessee, Virginia, who've been affected by this disaster. FEMA has not been doing what they were supposed to be doing. FEMA has not been helping in the way that they should be helping. And I've got a video from an actual meeting to prove it. This is from an actual FEMA disaster preparedness meeting. Listen to where their priorities are. This should make you sick to your stomach. You've got to share this video, tap the thumbs up with everybody you know. This is an abomination. Sparked a few things um, it, in my mind, thinking about preparedness and how you said, you know, uh, LGBTQIA people and people who have been um, disadvantaged already are struggling. They already have their own things to deal with so you add a disaster on top of that um it's it's just compounding on itself um and i think that is maybe uh the why of why we're having these discussions is because it, it isn't being talked about it isn't being socialized we're not paying attention to this community thank you so much uh maggie thank you yeah i there are a couple of things that are intersecting in my mind here. One of them is the culture of emergency management as an organization, as an industry in the United States specifically, not um, abroad. Look at them with their pronouns. Um, this in their, has, oh. and my cat sometimes does this. She gets really loud suddenly, so you'll have to just allow for the little meowing in the background. Um, of course, she's the, a cat, childless uh, cat. You lady. know, the shift that we're seeing right now is a shift in emergency management from utilitarian principles where everything is designed for the greatest good for the greatest amount of people to disaster equity. Uh, but we have to do more. Right. And so. Wait, 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 wait. What is wrong with the greatest amount of good to the greatest amount of people equally? That's equally. That's equity. What is wrong with that? That's the American way. Am I crazy? Am I nuts? Let me know in the comments. What is wrong with that? This topic is intersecting, I think, with a number of other topics where we have to look at policies 
and understand to what extent they have disadvantaged uh, communities that had less assets, communities that had pre-existing vulnerabilities in accessing disaster-related... Like what, uh, gender identity? Federal Emergency Management Agency is a Department of Homeland Security outfit tasked with stabilizing and assisting communities after a disaster. In the wake of Hurricane Helene, the Biden-Harris agency has come up short, leaving some hard-hit communities to pick up the pieces all alone. Critics have reviewed possible political factors that may have undermined the agency and its ability to adequately respond to this deadly disaster. After all, the FEMA website indicates, which I just showed to you, the agency's top strategic goal. This is Criswell. She's the director. Her very top, I just showed you, is to instill equity as a foundation of emergency management. Signals uh, a subordination of utility to ideology. These agencies should not be adopting ideologies. You are meant to serve one purpose, help Americans who need the help. The apparent federal push away from helping the greatest number of Americans to prioritizing help for specific types of favored Americans was driven by the Biden-Harris administration, particularly by President Joe Biden, June 25th, 2021 in a DEI executive order. According to FEMA, undeserved communities as well as specific identity groups often suffer disproportionately from disasters. As a result, disasters worsen inequities already present in society. This cycle compounds the challenges faced by these communities and increases their risk to future disasters. By instilling equity as a foundation of emergency management and striving to meet the unique needs of undeserved communities, the emergency management community can work to break this cycle and build a more resilient nation. I mean, it sounds like when something Kamala Harris would say on one of her fake stage premeditated interviews with an allied network like CNBC or, or CNN, that's that means absolute goose egg. Zilch, nothing, it's garbage through and through. And this is the main reason that we have seen the quality, the craftsmanship, the effectiveness, the diligence of not only products, services, and goods, but every facet of our lives, our education, our government, the public sector, private sector, just Remember the last time you tried to get on the phone with somebody to resolve some bureaucratic red tape nightmare scenario, maybe something to do with your phone, your utility bill, your health care, what have you. Let me know what that conversation was like now versus 5, 10, 20 years ago. I can tell you from my experience, it's night and day. I want the America I was raised in. I don't really understand what spawned this parasitic idea. I have some guesstimations. White liberal guilt is one that comes top of mind, but I don't know. You let me know. I There's a lot of factors. I, I think that's one of the more, more predominant ones. But let me know in the comments, why do you think this has taken over every facet of American life and society? I call it the contagion, the worst virus that's ever infected our land. It's worse than Ebola. It's worse than COVID because it's invisible. It's a psychological virus. It's not something like, you know, you fall off your bike, you break your ankle. It's tangible. It's practical. It's very identifiable. You broke your ankle. You got to, you know, rest. You got to maybe get a stint or whatever or cast. This is invisible. You can't really put your finger on what's going on or what's happening or why or what's the purpose or why has this idea lived for so long when it's done nothing but damage. And now we're seeing it reflected in FEMA. I also think this is something, and it's it's a fact because he said it many, many times. This started with our divider in chief, President Barack Obama. I think that has a lot to do with it. And Biden and Kamala are just minions. They're just puppets perpetuating this parasitic disease. So the solution is simple. If we want this to end, if we want to get back to the America we were raised in, get back to an America that makes sense, to an America that's based on just common sense principles and values, 
merit, best idea wins, regardless of your skin tone, your ethnicity, your sexual orientation, your gender. Best person for the job wins, regardless of arbitrary characteristics that you and I have zero control over. The solution to me is very simple. You have to vote them out come November. This is our chance to get our country back. I throw this off to you, Nez Nation. Let me know what you think in the comments down below. Am I wrong? Look, I welcome all viewpoints. If I'm wrong, prove it to me. Let me know in the comments down below. As long as you're constructive, thoughtful, and you engage in critical thinking, I will listen to you. I will respond to you. Personal ad hominem attacks and links go straight to spam. I don't even bother. It's a waste of my time. But I'd love to hear from you. I, I welcome all viewpoints. Let me know in the comments down below. Share this video with everybody you know. Tap that thumbs up. We have to wake America up. Do we want more of this? I mean, FEMA is now DEI. Do we want more of this? Remember the video that I produced not that long ago. If you haven't seen it, you got to see it. Of that awesome ex-Space Force commander who challenged Trump. Uh, he said he was fired, lost his pension because he challenged DEI uh, ideologies that the military kept perpetuating. I mean, even the military, it's so sad. And then Trump said, I'm going to make you uh, in charge. I'll do you one better. I'm going to make you in charge of our task force. If we want this to stop, if we want to get back to where we used to be, we have got to take action November 5th and we got to raise awareness. That's why I don't want the likes for me. It's not for me. It's for my country. So if you love America, tap that thumbs up. Check out these videos coming up on the screen right here. If you missed these, subscribe and follow. Click my face right there. Sign up for our free newsletter. It's absolutely free. It's your sure proof way of never missing out. And as always, may God bless you and may God bless America. I'll see you soon.